Okay. Doing unto us what we do. Do unto others what you would want done to you. <laughs> That's a quote from the Bible. Book of Genesis. Just kidding, I have no idea what the f it is. Hi, Coco. This is a baby. Oh my god. Right, go, 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 go. <laughs> Just another day in the life. Occupational hazard. Girl Kitchen. <laughs> um, today, we're I know you're all big fans, and you've all seen me make this on my Instagram before, and every time I make it and post it, people are like, oh my god. They're like, passing out, passing, passing away. away. They, oh, they can't, I love when we do that. They can't fathom how delicious this dish looks, and they're like, please. They're begging, they're clamoring. They're are ferociously desiring a tutorial. So what? before we get into what the tutorial is going to be, as you are all big fans and you do know what this is already, um, I just want to make sure that all of our fans are subscribed to our channel. Please. Like, ugh. just as how, just as you were begging me for this tutorial, we are begging you for to your, stop being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, time to grow up. I, I really had enough. Haven't we all? So Matthew, what are we making? Delicious red snapper. And it does even raw. It does look delicious. It does. It's a very beautiful fish. Um, this is something that's super easy to make, super quick, and this is in my normal cycle like my weekly cycle of dishes. You know how you have one of those things that you make all the time? This is one of those things um, because it is so easy and delicious. So all you need is the red snapper. You're going to need olive oil, the miscellaneous spices. As you know, I really rely on my spices. We have our lemon garlic. We have a jerk chicken and fish to give a little bit of spice. Um, we have the Florida seasoned pepper which is like a pepper with, you guessed it. Orange? No, a citrus kick. Well, I mean, Florida, I think of oranges, don't you? Well, with Hot Girl Kitchen, I think of citrus You're kick. You're right. Because that's really all sorry. we ever talk about is a citrus kick. <laughs> and then more citrus. Um, some pasta sprinkle because this has a lot of really good herbs. It has basil, thyme, oregano. So instead of me just having to add them individually, it really saves the stuff. And then, Melissa, I believe I might have a Northwood seasoning over there that we may have left out of the frame. That was my bad. Nope, not that one. Nope, next. <laughs> and this is actually a little spicy. So, it, the jerk isn't really, like, spicy, per se. Like, I don't really know how to describe it. I'll describe it for you. The first ingredient is ginger, so that should let you know that it's not very spicy. And then there's ancho chili pepper. So that's the spice, brown Ooh, sugar. You know what? You might want to use this I as another thing later. I might use this for something. This is a very great Penzi's. Honestly, <laughs> you're not sponsoring that, but it's time. It's, it's time. It's been long Ask enough. Melissa, literally. I'm sick of hearing about yeah. your refusal to sponsor. There's nothing I make without Penzi's. Like, I... My entire, am I exaggerating? My entire spice rack is Penzi's. Mm -hmm. Do it, McCormick, I don't know her. It's all Penzi's, <laughs> like, it, it's, and we mention you in every one of our videos. It's really time for you to step up your game. Grow up. And send me some spices. So the Northwoods is coarse flake salt, whatever that is, Hungarian sweet paprika, um, tela cherry, black pepper, thyme, cracked rosemary, granulated garlic, and chipotle. So even though chipotle is the last ingredient, if you smell it, you can smell the heat. Mm -hmm. It smells good. As opposed to smelling the jerk, it really doesn't smell like it's going to, like, you know, add a ton of spice. You know what I mean? So now that I've really educated you on that, <laughs> and now that we've baked Penzi's for a sponsorship, that's all you need for the fish. And then I'm also going to be making, oh, and you need a lemon. I love to cook it with a fresh lemon wedge on top. Um, and then I'm going to make a delicious 
would you say this is an aioli or more of a remoulade? I'd say an aioli. We're going to make a delicious aioli with just some mayo, some uh, lime. We need lime juice and lime zest. Zest, yeah. I was, like, doing the motion. I couldn't think of the word. And cilantro. So, I mean, if you're not going to make the sauce, which the sauce is only three ingredients, the fish also is, like, very simple, very low amount of ingredients needed. This is really, like, an easy yet impressive dish. If you serve this to your guests, they're going to be like, wow, oh, my God, did I, did I slip and fall into a five-star restaurant? Like, <laughs> did I accidentally black out and end up in a fine dining experience? And it's like, it, no, it, you're in know. my home. But you, you sh you're right about that. Mm -hmm. It is fine dining still, mm -hmm. okay? So let's start out with making our sauce. Like we said, all you need is some mayonnaise, some lime juice and lime zest, and cilantro. There really aren't exact measurements. It's kind of Just however it's to taste. My God, what a pleasant noise. Sounds like a... Oh, yeah, it sounds like a wop. No, wop. I think it's wop. No, remember you said wop the last Yeah, time but then I rewatched a few videos, and I think it is wop. Cardi and Meg, if you're watching, can you leave a comment below <laughs> to, <laughs> to <laughs> confirm which pronunciation is appropriate? Oh, no. Thank God I didn't get on my shirt. I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. So we used... This much mayo, however <laughs> much that may wow, be. Wow, such a precise measurement. Let me make a little hole in the center for the rest of our ingredients. We're going to start out with our cilantro, that, which we've chopped. Just a rough chop. I don't want to use the whole thing because I can always add a little more, but you can never take it out. And then we're going to zest our lime. Maybe. It doesn't seem as though. There we go. Doesn't didn't seem like the lime was feeling too zesty. Oh my god, I wish you had smell a vision. Because it smells like a citrus grove in here. A citrus grove. <laughs> Yum. Okay. You know what? That's good for now. I think that's and good. And if I want to add more, I'll do it off camera because I'm starting to get performance anxiety. <laughs> Are you getting sore from all the hard work? I am. This is too much of an arm workout for me. Okay, now let's squeeze our lime juice in there. You definitely want to use the juice of a whole lime because you it's don't want small... it to be super mayo-y. You need it to be wet enough. Yeah, you want it to, and you want the flavor to be more so of the lime and the cilantro, not mayonnaise. And another trick, too, is if the sauce is a little too thick, you can add just a little bit of water, just like a little splash, mm. and that'll help thin it out so it's more saucy. Mmm, yeah, we like it saucy. <laughs> Let me do a little taste test. I don't know. I think we could use more cilantro and more lime zest. Kick a gander. Definitely more cilantro. Maybe, honestly, let me let me just glance at Maybe yours. some pepper. I was going to say... Some Florida I, pepper. Yeah. So this is Tella Cherry Black Pepper, Citric Acid, Lemon Peel, Garlic, Orange Peel, and Onion. I think that'll really give it a little something. Mmm. Quite delicious. That's very good. And we're ready. Okay, so now I'm going to get the fish ready for the pan. We have a cast iron skillet heating on high heat on the stove right now. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, it's time to get one because quite literally I cook everything on it. Um... So what we're going to do is we're going to start, and we also have some lemon wedges ready, or actually they're lemon wheels, wheels ready for the cooking. 
We're gonna start with olive oiling the skin side. So this is super important because you are going to want to eat the skin. We're making the skin crispy. So this is crispy skin red stopper. And in order for it to stick to the pan, you need olive oil in the pan, super hot, and you also need olive oil a little bit on the skin. So we're gonna flip it over. And we're also gonna put olive oil on this side. And I'm gonna lightly season it because you'll see my little trick to get the skin crispy um, involves an extra tool. And if I, it, it tends to get, like take some of the seasoning off. So I'm gonna re-season the top side while it's cooking. So can you add a little bit of salt and pepper since my one hand is a little bit oily. That's good on that piece. Perfect. I, I need to get a new pepper grinder because it like doesn't like... Yeah, it's just whole cloves. <laughs> yeah, it's like not, it's not doing what we need it to be doing. I don't know if it broke. That's good. Love a whole clove of pepper experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we're gonna do our jerk. It's kinda got stuck in the container a bit. Honestly, that's good for that because we're gonna add a little more. The North Woods for a little bit of heat. Heavy on the Trinidad because as we know, we, we love a Trinidad. citrus flair. A little bit of pasta sprinkle just to add a, a depth of flavor, add a, a few extra herbs, and oops, <laughs> and some Florida pepper. And now I'm just gonna pat, it looks like a live seasoning because it's all just like sitting in one place on the fish. But once I pat it in, you'll see that it kind of spreads nicely and evenly coats the side of the fish. And also, because we're not seasoning the, the skin side, obviously, you want this side to be more heavily seasoned. That way, you get the flavor, like, throughout the whole bite. You know what I'm saying? So, now that I have our seasonings already on here, ready to go, we are going to move on over to the stove. So we have our cast iron skillet, which we, we've established. We stand cast iron skillets on high heat. It's actually more like medium high because super high heat um, ends up setting the house on fire. And we're going to add some olive oil. And as you can see, it's already smoking. And we're gonna make sure we get the bottom of the pan coated. And now quickly, we want to add our fillets on top and our trick to get it to stick is we you have to have some kind of utensil to like kind of shove the fish down so that the skin actually sticks to the bottom of the skillet and so we're gonna do this for about four minutes not actually with me holding it I'm gonna hold it for like another minute and I'm gonna cook it on this side for four minutes and then we're gonna flip it over Okay, so we've had our fish cooking on the skin side for about four minutes. I, after I was done with the um, with pressing them down so that the skin would stick to the skillet um, for about a minute, I added our lemon wheels. Um, maybe I should explain why I was doing that. Um, let me flip these over and then you'll actually see why. We want our snapper skin to look this way. We wanted it to all stick nicely and get a nice blackened experience. So normally, when you cook it, you, when it hit, as soon as it hits the heat, it curls, the fish curls up. So that's why we had to press it down to make sure that the skin was flush with the skillet and it would get nice and crispy. Well, guys, 
it looks like we're ready to divulge. Divulge? Devour, maybe? No, divulge. What are we divulging? Into it, whatever. Divulge is to like, to like release a secret. We're divulging our secret red snapper. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's not a secret to you guys though, because hopefully you've been you've watching been our- You've been paying attention. Yeah, you've been paying attention the whole time. So We're ready to dig in to our Devour. Beautiful. We're ready to devour. I think that's the word you were looking for, was devour. Um, and I love that our rose gold forks really match the color of the skin. And FYI, you do need a sharp knife to cut this because the skin is super crispy. The actual fish is super flaky, but the skin is crispy, which is just how we wanted it. If you don't like the skin, you're deranged, but you can always just like, the skin comes off very easily as you can see, so. What do you think, girl? It's what I deserve, that's what I think. What's your review? This is her first time ever having Red Snapper. Yeah, and it's very good. And I love the aioli, it's very good as well. Mmm. Oh, I did that. I mean, you did. There's not much else to say. There really isn't. You guys, you'll you'll do that one day when you also do this. So all you need is a cast iron skillet and determination, mm -hmm. and you can too have a perfect red snapper at home. There really, I mean, was that hard to make? No, very simple, very quick. Stop going out to eat and spending. A million dollars. Forty nine dollars on a meal for red snapper. When you could cook it yourself. Yeah. You know another thing I would really like to point out? Your fave could literally never do this in her mm -hmm. whole life. Even if she watched this tutorial like one million times, she could quite literally never replicate what we've done tonight. No. So I, I don't know why you're still friends with your fave, but that is what she would do. That shouldn't Not be your fave anymore. We're your new fave. And you're subscribed to us, and I mean, that's that. I mean, there's really nothing else we can say. <laughs> there really isn't. Other Except than... cheers. Cheers to a fabulous experience. Real hot girl shit. <laughs>